With this likely being the last month for Season 5, I'm going to help you out with a few challenges to get these completed. In this one, we're going to talk about release the geese challenge to earn yourself the hazard paid camo. And I'm going to tell you the easiest way to go about doing this because you have to play the last mission of Halo 3 on Legendary. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So this is going to be a pretty fun video to check out because one, we're going to be showing some speedrunning tactics for the last mission of Halo 3 as well as the best way to finish the mission on a mongoose, which sounds super easy at first, but really when you actually try doing this, it takes a quite some time. It actually took me an hour to figure out how to do this properly, but once I did, it took me like less than 20 minutes, which was great. So in this video, I'm going to showcase to you again some kind of speedrunning tactics. So this first part here, you're just going to be kind of just running through normally. And the, really when the speedrunning tactics come in is when you first get to the area where the floods start dropping in on drop pods to come get you. So let me know if you guys want to see some more of these challenge tutorials to help you out with some of the more difficult parts of seasonal challenges, because each season has its own challenge. I'll definitely be willing to help out with you guys grind through it on the stream right here as you see me on stream doing this right now. So the first thing you want to do is throw a grenade right there. That's where a brute flood form will spawn. You need to grab that gravity hammer right there. Just use a rocket launcher to kill, kill, clear out some of the areas just to make sure that you're not getting harassed by a bunch of flood guys. It is rather random. So this is what you just need to do right here is jump on top of this platform. I choked with the grenade. So I'm going to hit the choke checkpoint right here. Luckily, I got a nice checkpoint. Oftentimes it'll spawn you right back where you threw the grenade at first. So what you want to do is throw a grenade down and then before you reach your max jump, right, you want to jump a little bit earlier than you would expect because you want that physics of the grenade to kind of throw you up there. And then you, what you want to do is after that grenade explodes, then you do your hammer swing to kind of launch yourself even higher, crouch jumping with the momentum backwards, and then you'll be able to get up there. That's like a big key about it. So you want to make sure you have a good amount of momentum going backwards off of that jump to make sure you're able to get enough height and enough momentum. So when those grenade goes off and when you swing that hammer, you have that ability to get up to that high elevation doing the backwards crouch jump. That's probably the, actually the most difficult maneuver in this entire video. It takes a couple of times, but once you get it, you get the feel of it and then you'll be able to get it. Like I said, the checkpoint is most likely at the uh, part where I first threw that grenade for the brute. Um, luckily, I got a nice checkpoint right at the spot. So the reason why I jumped up here to go to Johnson, because Johnson gives you the ability to have an unlimited ammo Spartan laser, as you can see right here. So what you need to do is kill Johnson, take away his Spartan laser. He'll spawn back up with another Spartan laser, grab that Spartan laser. And then this Spartan laser right here that I have has unlimited ammo. So all you can do is just stay on top of this ledge and just take out all the flat baddies as much as you want. You'll know when you're done, especially when when all the flood boys just kind of stop coming in. So I'll speed through this section because it's really just stay on top of a ledge and just sniping a bunch of flood boys as they come by. You actually see I move forward because I saw a checkpoint come up and Arbor spawned back up. So I figured that, okay, we hit the checkpoint. We actually didn't. So I just jumped back up to this corner, walked off this ledge, back up to the perch right here just to watch out for any flood boys coming in. Uh, they do have rockets. So you also go on keep in mind to stay away from any walls for the most part. Uh, I haven't really come across it too much, but I did get killed, I think, one time trying to do this. And you see the checkpoint popped up, so now it's okay to kind of jump down and eventually get into the permission to progress it forward to where we get into the room with Spark and the most epic boss battle ever in video game history coming up right here <laughs> to uh, put it uh, sarcastically, I guess. Yeah, this boss mission is very... Uh, I don't know, I guess very basic, very scripted. So all you need to do on Legendary, you don't need to bother actually shooting him at all until the very end after Sp after you see Johnson die. I know, spoiler alert there. I'm just shooting him just because I'm bored. Uh, but basically, he just fires his laser like three times and he pushes you back once. You just need to basically just stand there because there's nothing you can do. He's going to go through these sequences. You just stand there and just make sure you don't get killed by his laser. Pretty easy just to jump over, duck over, whatever works for you the best. And then he'll do like the couple waves and then Johnson will get up. He'll shoot him with his laser right there. They kind of stun him a little bit. You walk forward. I already have Johnson's unlimited laser in my hands right now. And so I don't need to pick it up. It's just funny watching him just just die. <laughs> And so then now this is the part where you actually can shoot Spark again. I think you just need to put three laser shots into him and it's all good to go. Again, just lightly dodging his shots. Don't push too far forward because he'll push you. Uh, I have been pushed off this ledge a couple times when playing because uh, without thinking about it, I just kind of walk forward and, uh, you know, Spark ends up killing me surprisingly. So it's very avoidable deaths, but if you, just, you know, play it easy, play it casual, you'll actually do just fine. 
So now let's get to the part where how to get out of this section right now, because it actually has some issues with this previously. You'll see a cut right here because I died a few times because a main point I want to get across with this next section is you need to make sure RB walks with you to make sure that uh, he's able to, to take away some fire off of you because I just tried running forward, tried doing speed run tactics as best as possible. Uh, Halo 3 has a bit of randomness when it comes to uh, you know, enemies spawning in the way they prioritize tar targets and stuff like that. And so I had an issue a couple times where it took me like five tries to get through this because once I got to this door, all of these sentinels would just focus on me and just light me up. You'll see me in a second here, just kind of turn around, probably just making sure that Arby is with me, which he is, I'm just gonna wait for him to walk up. This is why it's su super important to have Arbiter with you in this mission. I'll tell you later with the mongoose portion as well. And so I'm just gonna walk up here and like I said, like up this section, this is where I was getting this laser beam by all the sentinels. It was so annoying. The part was like, why is I been doing this wrong? Because I'm not with Arbiter. Arbiter really does a great job of distracting fire off of you and getting him and having him getting shot. He's invincible. He won't die. He just like really helps you a lot on the legendary runs. That probably is like the ultimate like super speed run tactic to make sure that like you can just run forward and you'll be just fine. Like oh, I, but no, I just wanted to make this like the easiest way possible for you to go about doing this because playing Halo on legendary isn't exactly easy. Now this next portion here, you just want to make sure you kind of stay off to the right to so get out of the way of all the flood baddie guys. Make sure you just don't get shot. Again, it is kind of randomized how targets are prioritized in this section. So I got away. Kind of lucky on this one other times they'll just see you and just I'll light you up and so it's kind of just like randomized right there uh, you want to walk off to the left obviously to avoid these explodey flood boys right here as well and this is where we're going to get to the last part of the mission where we'll be able to jump on top of the mongoose and make our way forward so this tutorial will hopefully give you guys some examples of how to run through this because actually doing this on a mongoose is way harder than doing it on a warhog uh, so here we are we're on the warhog section here so what you want to do is obviously just jump on top of this warhog, drive forward, and when you get past this little cave rocky section, take a left turn. That's where you will find the mongoose. I believe if you're doing like the vidmaster challenge, that's where you'll have some ghosts spawn up if I remember correctly. By the way, the skybox in this mission is absolutely beautiful. Those This finish to Halo is just absolutely incredible. I love this. So yeah, you drive off to this left side here. This is where you'll find the mongoose right here. And I actually realized that Arbiter is a, Arbiter? Arbiter is a little uh, picky when it comes to wanting to jump on. So I had to jump off of this, get him off of the mongoose, get him off of the warhog, get on here, and then he jumps on top. And so uh, the, game, the way the game is programmed, like, you don't really need to wait for Arbiter to jump on top of the uh, mongoose because it'll kind of just like fade in on top of it, uh, just so to make it easier for the player. So you don't have to really wait for him too much whenever like you will fly Flip the mongoose there's it's inevitable you will flip your mongoose on this ride so it's all just about getting lucky and also having the right path when it comes to driving through this mission right here and you know because you have these panels they have randomized physics with it they can just like randomly land on top of you or just smack you off your way and because the mongoose is actually quite the pain to you try to drive with on this game because of, I think it utilizes like the same physics pretty much as the uh, Warhog, but it's much lighter, so it tips a lot easier, and it's actually slower than a Warhog as well, which you would think that a smaller compact vehicle like a Mongoose would go faster, but it really doesn't. It's actually quite slower. It's actually quite annoying to deal with. Like I said, when I first tried this, guys, before figuring out everything, it took me an hour in total to figure out how to do this mission properly. Luckily, I had chat with me on live stream to help me out with comes to tips, just to you know help me get through this mission uh, effectively as possible. But then after this, you just, this is why you need Arbiter in the back. Though you see how it's getting tagged by those lasers, as I showed you in the beginning of this video, you need Arbiter because if you don't have him on the back of your mongoose, every sentinel is going to look at just you and they're going to light you up and it will make it nearly impossible. Now I'm sure there's some magical way you can do it without Arbiter in the back. But I'm telling you, this is the easiest way and most guaranteed way to go about doing it. This is the most success I found while trying to do this mission on Legendary is to make sure you have Arbiter on the back because he'll distract fire off of you and put it onto him. Like I mentioned earlier, he's invincible. He won't die. He'll keep jumping on top of your mongoose. So it's really like no burden whatsoever. And it's only a benefit to have him on there. Here we are on the next section. Again, you really want to try to navigate your way through. Like I said, I just flipped over the mongoose that easily. Like on the Warhog, that wouldn't happen. But this next section here, it gets a 
little tricky because you really want to try to make sure you navigate your way through all these flood guys. Don't try running them over because your mongoose is so slow and so small and weak that you really can't do it. And you also want to really try to avoid these flood forms because as you can see, they will tip your mongoose so easily to an extremely frustrating point. Like look how far this platform is tilting. I'm not used to this. I'm like, oh gosh, we're going to go down. Aren't we? We're going down with the ship on this one. And then this freaking sentinel is in my way. Are you kidding me? Like, it seems like everything was against me in this situation, but uh, so it's really just comes down to luck. Like I said, again, right there, perfect example why you need Arbiter in the back. You see all those lasers trying to light me up? That was absolutely insane. Uh, again, like, I'm sorry if this video is a bit longer, but I just want to showcase exactly how I played through it. So you guys can watch this video one time through, you'll know exactly what to do, how to drive through this whole situation, and you'll be just fine. Mainly the tricks are when it comes to the first part to try to make it so you can do that speedrun tactic to try to go up the uh, forerunner structure because it just makes it so much easier than trying to go through it normally. I mean, you can go through it normally and it's, you know, designed for that way. It's just a little bit more difficult than it needs to be. And there are easier ways to go about doing this mission. And uh, this section right here, you can actually do a bit of a jump where you can shortcut that, that wall right there on the left side with a Warhog. Obviously with a Mongoose, you're slower, you can't make that. So again, I'm gonna have to try to navigate my way through. And you can see I'm trying to, you know, weave my way through all of these uh, flood forms right here. This section is a pain because of the stopping power effect those pure flood forms have with like the carbine like shots that they have. It's, oh, that was pain trying to get through this. Uh, and I cut this up on from stream just to make sure I can show you guys all in one take what it looks like for a successful run. <laughs> yeah, you know, you will die a couple times, I'm sure, unless you just get super lucky with it if you're trying to do like some god tier speed run. Uh, but this is just kind of showcasing all this different kind of speed running tactics you can utilize on this mission to just try to get through it as quickly as possible because if you just try to do it a normal way, I mean, with counting deaths and, and just the amount of enemies you have to fight off, you probably would take you close to like an hour even, you know, but uh, unless you're just like a master at everything on Legendary. Uh, but uh, this way, it took me about like 15, 20 minutes to run through this mission. Important section right here, you want to make sure you stay to the left on this jump because if you go through the middle, your Warhawk's not fast, your Mongoose is not fast enough, you'll fall through the hole as you see right there to the right. I fell through that the first time I ran through it. You want to go to the left or right jump. You don't want to go through that middle jump. Super important to keep note of. Again, you just flip over constantly with this Mongoose because the physics on it are just like annoyingly terrible <laughs> to some points. And so that's why like when I first read the uh, release the Geese challenge, I'm like, oh, just finish on Legendary. That's no problem whatsoever. It actually, it's a bit of a challenge. It's a little tricky. But now that we're at this section here, it's really just kind of, you know, self-explanatory. You just kind of keep driving forward. And once you do all that great stuff, you finish out the mission and you get to witness the amazing cutscene that's there for you to enjoy the ending of Halo 3. I can't believe that section right there. I almost fell off the edge. I was just kind of getting a little lazy. I was like, yeah, we can just take a turn right here. That's fine. I think the ultimate speedrun tactic is to go up along the wall right there on the left side, kind of the elevated pathway. I was like, yeah, I'll just go to lower way whatsoever, you know. And just, again, look, we're not trying to do like ultimate like speedrun tactics. I'm just going to show you the different tactics you can utilize within this playthrough to make sure that you can try to do this the easiest way possible with also being as effective as possible. And hopefully I was able to showcase that in this video. If you guys want to see some more of these kind of challenge tutorial videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know if you want to see some more content like this. And again, if you want to catch me on stream, link in the description down below. We do stream every Tuesday and Thursday night. And uh, just thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hope it helps out and i'll catch you all in the next one peace out why did i start spinning like that okay we released the geese got it completed yes oh that took way longer than it needed to take <laughs>